Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you because Jesus is all in all to us. You've given him to us so as to meet all our every desire and all our needs. And Lord, we pray that as we come to this workers' retreat, that you reveal more of Jesus to us in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray that all the needs of our lives, spiritually and in every other way, will be met by you in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that from the very beginning, you will guide us. Amen. You will teach us. Amen. And you lift up us to higher heights in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And tonight we're talking about reaching the eagle's height. Reaching the eagle's height. If you have started the Christian race for some time, you would have discovered in your own life that when you started the Christian journey, you had joy, you had the height of love, and the experience you had with the Lord, it appeared that you were sort of on a mountain top. But as time went by, you became a worker in the vineyard of the Lord. In different capacities, the moment you were first chosen to be a worker, you were full of joy. And then you had excitement in leading people to the knowledge of the Lord. Eventually, as time went by, you discovered times of discouragement came. Times of hardship came. And you began to feel that the joy you had in the service of the Lord before was now going down. And you would have experienced perhaps what happened to people like Moses, people like Joshua, people like David, people like Elijah. What is it that happened to them? There was a time that Moses felt the weight and the load of the work. He was actually sinking in the mire of despondency and in the valley of despair because he felt the body was too great for him. At that time, he wasn't at the heart of joy, the joy of service. Neither was he overflowing with love, love for the people. Neither was he still saying, I will go all the lane. I'll climb all the mountain. I'll go through the journey. I'll do anything that it will take. He became depressed and discouraged. At that time, he spoke to the Lord and said, Lord, why is it like this? You may have discovered in your life that the Christian work sometimes has been like that for you. Confused, depressed, and everything became upside down. You felt you would even want to leave the work now because the joy you felt before and the overflowing love you had before was no longer there. But it's important for you to know that you are not the only person to have felt like that. Moses was like that before. Do you remember Joshua? The first time we read about him, there was no discouragement. He was like a young man in the work of the Lord, very, very close to Moses. And everywhere that Moses went, he went. We wonder how he was able to go with Moses to the mountainside. While Moses went to the mountain top, and for 40 days, Moses was just depending upon the Lord, not eating, not drinking. While they were coming back from the mountain, he heard the noise of the people. And he said, the people have just won the victory. And Moses said, that's not the voice and the sound of victory. Because at that time, all that Joshua could think about is success, victory, courage in warfare, achievement. So that's why he told Moses that. But Moses said, this is not the voice of the people that have just won victory in the battle. Eventually, they got in there. All the time, it was, it was by the side of Moses. And you know, when he was sent out to wage war against the Amalekites, he didn't say, no, I can't go. No, I can't do that. He was all the time joyful. But eventually, they came to the land of Canaan. And something happened that he never, never expected. The people fell before the enemy. And he was fasting. He was crying. He was discouraged. He said, Lord, what will I do? If these children of Israel began to fall at this time, 
before their enemies. Then they will run back. Then I will be ashamed. What will I do with my life? And I was lying down before the Lord. Maybe you have been like that too. You've seen the dwindling in the work of the Lord committed into your hand. You've seen the disappointments. You've seen some of the workers and some of the members, they've done things you never imagined. Until you began to feel, I think it's even better for me to just be an ordinary member. This is too much for me. You prayed, you couldn't get through. You fasted, you couldn't get through. You complained, you couldn't get through. You are just like Joshua, before your face, before the Lord. The case of Elijah will come to your mind. There was a time when he was completely bold. And he came before Ahab and said, According to my word, there will be no dew nor rain all these years that man had authority. And when he was at the brook cherries, no day of complaint. When he came to the widow, according to the direction of the Lord, the directives of the Lord, no single complaint. And when the Lord said, Go and show yourself to Ahab, because I'm bringing rain, no single complaint. And he did everything single-handedly. Maybe you've been like that. You said, I don't care whether those area leaders are cooperating or not. I can do everything single-handedly. I don't care whether the house fellowships are cooperating or not. Whether they are doing their work or not. I will do the work of the area leader. I will do the work of the house leaders. I will do the work of the soul winners. I will do the work of everybody. No discouragement. No complaint. And eventually when it came to the time of bringing fire down from heaven. He challenged all the prophets of Baal. Who knows you might have been like that. All the religionists around you, in your area, in your district, in your zone, around your house fellowship community, you challenge them and fire came down. But eventually, Jezebel, just a woman. This man, Elijah, had confronted Ahab, had confronted the prophets of Baal, had confronted even the spirit of death before this time, had confronted everything and anything that challenged his ministry. But eventually, Je um, Jezebel said, you've been running as if you are an eagle, as if you are a lion, no fear, no problem. But by this time tomorrow, I'll show you who I am. All of a sudden, aren't you surprised that a person like Elijah could ever get discouraged? And he could ever say, this is enough. And he took a servant. He didn't even tell us the name of a servant. He didn't even get any encouragement from his servant and left him under one oak tree and then went ahead and was lying down. A preacher who had been standing up before. A preacher who had called fire down from heaven. A preacher that destroyed all those prophets of Baal was now lying down. And the angel came to him, gave him food. He didn't even say like, Jacob, I will not let you go except you bless me. He said, no, I don't even want blessing now. I don't want strength. I don't want anything. All I want to do is die. I don't want to talk to an angel. Let God himself come. I want to talk to God. I have a problem. I have some things to discuss. I won't tell an angel. And the angel said, rise up and eat. He rose up. Didn't say, where are you coming from? Any revelation for me? A person like Elijah. And he ate. After eating, you would have thought, a man of God like that, that man can't stop preaching. That man can't stop ministering. He lay down again, he slept. The angel came back and said, Arise. And then he ate again. The angel came back and said, Arise and eat. The journey is too long for you. Which journey? I'm not interested in any journey. He didn't even ask the angel, Which journey? Where are we going to? What am I going to do there? And eventually, he ate the food and he kept on walking. And when he heard the voice of the Lord, you know the story. And the Lord said, Elijah, you of all people, Elijah, what are you doing here? How about the work? There's still a great ministry waiting for you. Because you are still going to anoint Elisha. You are still going to raise up that other man and that other man. He said, God, I couldn't talk to anybody, but I will talk to you. Kill me. How about the ministry I still have for you? Kill me. I'm not interested again. It's too much. I didn't know this is the way it will be. I'm tired, I'm worn out, I'm depressed, I'm discouraged, I cannot go on. And I don't want to backslide. So before I backslide and see my shame, just kill me. I'm not better than any of my fathers. I'm alone, the only one that remains. And they're seeking my life. The persecution is too much. 
I did what you told me to do. Everybody can read it in the law of Moses. That if anybody goes to worship idol or goes to worship Baal, kill them. That's your word. I obey. That's why I got into trouble. You told us in your word that Israelites must not serve idol. And the king in particular, he must not marry strange wife. That's why I'm not, I'm not popular anymore now. I'm in trouble with Ahab, with Jezebel, even the children of Israel. We know how we started. The many, many miracles that have happened. And now for three years, there have not been any rain. And I told Ahab, get up your loins, get your chariot. I'm going to pray upon all the prayer. And rain came down. They didn't even say thank you. They didn't even say, what a great man of God. Look at the rain. All these three years we have been suffering of the drought and the famine. Now rain has come. Where is this man of God? We should set him next to the king. As we respect the king, respect the prophet of God. They said, no, they are not even interested. As Jezebel is threatening to kill me now, nobody is even speaking for me to rescue me. Look at all the people I've helped in house fellowship. I know when that man wanted to marry, how I ran about, how I did everything. I know when that man was sick, when his wife was sick, almost dying. Two o'clock in the night, they came to call me. And I ran up, I ran down, I didn't eat. And even my wife was saying, ah, are you going to kill yourself? <laughs> House fellowship is for everybody. Uh, zona leader is sleeping out. You are not zona leader. An ordinary area leader, you want to die because of somebody going to hospital. My husband, Ito, because uh, this work, work will remain tomorrow after you die. And I did interest. Now I got into somebody told a lie against me before the zona leader. Now nobody can even defend me. Work, not me again. As all those other Christians are resting and they are going to church and they are going to heaven, I too will rest and go to heaven. The one I did before, ran up, ran down, almost killed myself, and nobody will even say thank you. All those people, why it not for me? When so and so was backsliding, I was the person that made him to come back. That other person, when she was having difficulty, I knew how many days I prayed and fasted with her before she got settled in her problem. Now, all that they are doing, no, not even a single thank you. And now they are going to report to coordinator. Then eventually they report to pastor. And pastor doesn't know it's working or it's not working. Pastor will just say, they reported you that you are not living right. Is that so? Okay, stop what you are doing. How about all that I did for all these five years? They won't see that the little mistake I made five minutes, they just fire me. No work again. You know that's what Elijah did. And God knew what Elijah had done. And God knows what you have done. That's why God didn't tell Elijah, you want to die, you want to commit suicide, okay, die. He said, Elijah, I still have 7,000 who have not bowed their knees unto Baal. And he said, arise, you won't even die. I'll make you an example, a sample for the rapture before the rapture takes place. But before that, just do this little thing and then after that, round up, we're ready to go. And he said, go back and strengthen him. That's why we are here. Some of us are discouraged. Some of us are depressed. Some of us are unhappy. For some of us, the burden is too great. Can you see David? Now, I wonder, I wondered when I was a younger Christian, that the people that are really serving God, they are the people that get into trouble. David killed Goliath. And David was not supposed to have killed Goliath ordinarily. He wasn't a member of the army. He wasn't a soldier. His senior brothers were good enough, lanky enough, and bold enough to be chosen as, the, uh, as part of the army. So the father just said, now David, your brothers are on the battlefield. I just want to know all you can carry, you can carry food, you can carry information. No more. No weapon. No battle, just carry information, carry food. And he went. And as he got there, he saw the Goliath challenging everybody. His own senior brothers, he saw them. They were dressing back. I don't want to die, but I must still see my father. I must still see my wife. I must still see my children. They were drawing back. And the children of Israel told Samuel, Choose a king for us. Who shall be able to go to battle before us like all the other nations? So they chose him in particular so that he can fight. The person they chose so he can fight, he wasn't fighting. He was in one corner somewhere. 
trembling everybody shaking and when david came out he saw he was just discussing with somebody goliath came out the moment goliath came out all the children of israel they ran they all almost pushed uh, david down and he said why why are we running he is not circumcised we are circumcised we have god ah, they said don't talk like that standing on the promises of god who can never fail don't talk like that this one well, the promises of god will not take care of this one haven't some people told you that before you know marriage problem problem in your place of work problem with your in-law problem with your persecutors and you stand on the promises of god you say i don't quote that one we have been before you we started reading bible before you. this one this one is not the case of standing on the promises of god you will die you want to face those people you better take care of yourself so david said let us not be afraid i can fight against this man and his senior brother came to him and said i know you are forward you are proud you know when they accuse us of pride and you are trying to help somebody you are trying to counsel somebody you are trying to uh, pray for somebody you are trying to encourage somebody they said who put you there that's what the pastor has been preaching every time pride 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 and the pastor preaches until he reads the whole bible on pride you are still proud and you say i'm not proud you are proud that's that statement you have made again that is a pride we are correcting you and at the same time you say you are not proud that's a pride eventually you say okay but i can kill this goliath and then you know they came to him and said well cool down little children they have many ideas in their head he said no this is not idea of little children i can do it okay let us take you to Saul. Ah, my son you cannot do it this goliath had been a warrior from a long time he said i have testimonies to give i killed the lion i can kill him i killed the bear i can kill him all right take the armor with you the thing was too heavy he said all this is not necessary when the spirit of god is there we don't need all this when the power of god is there we don't need all this okay how do you want to go just like i am with the power of god and the name of the lord but the point is that he killed goliath and his trouble started his own senior brothers who did not kill goliath saul never persecuted them he knew the house of jesse he never ran after them the person that killed goliath is a person that had trouble when i was a younger christian i used to think that the people that are serving god the people that are consecrated the people that are willing to put their lives in their hands and kill goliath they are the people having trouble i never understood but now i understand that you have those problems so that you can throw challenges back to god again if there were no problems how can you know the fulfillment of the other promises of god is the people that have problems that are able to stand on the promises of god those who don't have any problem they don't make use of the promises of god they just live an ordinary life a casual life but a time came for david it was too much for david and he was saying one day this man will come upon me and he will kill me and i was a day when he saw saul afar off he said saul what have i done are they telling you lies that i want to kill you i am innocent but he became so despondent then he left all his property in siklak with all the people that were following him and some people came they burnt the whole place they took their wives away they took all their property away and when they came back they started to cry and david was not a person used to crying david was a person when he saw a lion he never cried when he saw a bear he never cried even when he saw goliath he never cried but a time came that strong man the problem was too much for him this time he cried the other people also cried then the bible says he cried more than the rest of them eventually he encouraged himself in the lord brothers and sisters that's why we're here this weekend there are some of us by the grace of god we've been bold we've challenged even the devil even the lion the adversary going up and down but a time might have come in your life when depression and discouragement so came that like david you cried more than the rest of the people but the question is 
did those people end that way the answer is they didn't end that way that is moses a time of depression came a time of discouragement came did he die at the point of discouragement and depression the answer is no for joshua a time of discouragement and depression came in his own life when the people ran away from the enemy because of those who were defeated did he die in that condition the answer is no in the case of elijah did elijah die at that time no he was taken up by chariots of fire and he was able to leave behind the double portion of his spirit for elisha and in the case of david he laid to see many victories so the very first thing you need to understand is that whatever troubles you have got as a worker as a minister of the gospel you are not going to die like that whatever depression whatever discouragement whatever problems you have experienced what you need to understand is that the possibility is still there to fly and to mount up to the eagle's height in isaiah chapter 40 verse 28 as thou not known as thou not heard that the everlasting god the lord the creator of the ends of the earth fainteth not neither is weary there is no searching of his understanding sometimes unconsciously we think about god depending on our attitude depending on the problems we are facing at the time we are facing that problem when we're weak we seem to feel that the strength of god will not be able to carry us we're weak maybe he's weak when we do not have understanding and wisdom we used to think that how can i have with the wisdom unconsciously we feel that god does not have the wisdom and the strength to guide us at that time but the lord wants us to understand that whenever you get into the valley of despair or you get into the merry clay of despondency remember our god is still as mighty is still as powerful is still as wise as understanding as he ever had been as thou not known this is one of the things we ought to learn and know in our christian lives and in our christian journey that whatever is happening to you in your ministry in the zone in the district that our god is still a great god is the creator of the ends of the earth and you are his child and as a child of god he will make use of his power whenever it is necessary to pull you out of the pit out of the snare and out of the ditch in which you may find yourself the creator of the ends of the earth he fainteth not the devil may terrify you but never can terrify the lord the enemies of the gospel may harass you but never can harass the lord and the people that are wiser than you may be your enemies they may try so that they can confuse you they will never confuse the lord remember when you are confused god is not confused go to him when you are discouraged god is not discouraged go to him when you feel weak god is not weak go to him when you seem to lack wisdom and understanding god is still the possessor of all wisdom and understanding go to him you need to know the strength the power the wisdom the understanding of your god the creator of the heavens and the earth he will never faint and what was the what was the joy of israel their joy was to know that the god of israel will never faint and will never slumber he that keepeth israel will never faint will never slumber there is no searching of his understanding which means his understanding is so great you cannot exhaust so deep and so high he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increases strength many times when you become weak if you talk to backsliders you will know this they feel that because they are not strong 
because they cannot pray very well, because they are very weak, because they are painting, God can never give them anything. And you know, sometimes when you talk to such people, if you are not careful yourself, you tell them, as you are weak now, as you are painting now, as you are like this, God will never give you anything. If you don't rise up and pray and fast and do everything you can do, you will never get anything. You will just die like that. But God is not like that. He giveth power to the faint. Sometimes when you are discouraged, you say, there's no point praying. God will not give me anything. Because now I'm fainting, I'm discouraged, I'm unhappy, I'm sad. I'm even disappointed in myself. I'm disappointed in the work I'm doing. God will never give me anything. But the word of God says, he giveth power to the faint. At that time when you are fainting, that's the time he gives power. Don't you remember the cases of the people uh, reminded you of now? Moses. When he said, Lord, I'm not able to bear this burden again. It's too much for me. And if it is like this, kill me. What did the Lord do? Did the Lord, did the Lord kill him? No. He gave him 70 other people to help him. And he said, you have enough spirit. You have overflowing of the spirit of God. And let part of that spirit come upon these 70 who will assist you. I told you about the case of Joshua, who also was discouraged and was lying on the ground. And the Lord told him, Joshua, rise up. There is sin in the camp. Get rid of that sin, and I'm still with you. And he solved that problem. And God gave them another strategy for the warfare. I told you about Elijah when he said, Lord, this is enough now. I'm not more than any of my fathers. Let me die at this time. But God didn't allow him to die at that time. And in the case of David as well, God strengthened him. The same thing God is still doing today. Do you remember when the disciples of Jesus Christ went a fishing? They were discouraged. Their Lord had died. But now he rose from the dead. Even though he rose from the dead, he wasn't living with them. He'll go to heaven and then come back, then go and come back. But eventually Peter said, I go a fishing. And the others said, I feel like you feel. I'm discouraged like you are discouraged. I'm giving up like you are giving up. We'll go with you. What did the Lord do? He came to them and said, children, not enemies. You see, God doesn't use the language of man. If you were zonal leader, now you've got some area leaders and some house fellowship leaders. And uh, for one reason or the other, the brother is trying to get married and, you know, tells this one, says, no, I'm not the will of God for you. Tells that one, I'm not the will of God for you. Tells this one, I'm not the will of God for you. Ah, how can I, an area leader, be making mistake? I pointed at that one, that one, that one. No, I'm not the will of God. And then became discouraged. And then told some of the other area leaders and said, I go a fishing. All my work I led before and I sacrificed everything. Now that nothing is getting through, all those ladies, they are telling me, I don't know how to hear the voice of God again, I go up fishing. If you are, when you see them, what do you, what do you tell them? Backsliders, have you any meat? Enemies of the work of God, have you any meat? Descendants and relatives of Judas Iscariot, have you any meat? But Jesus said, children... After those people went a fishing, children, Jesus will never discourage you. God will never discourage you. They said, no, we don't have any, any meat. Now, if you were, honestly, what will you tell them? Oh, you. Didn't Jesus know many Bible passages? How those who backslide like that will never have any meat? They'll never have anything? They'll never have any satisfaction? And that's the time we begin to quote Bible to people. Like the friends of Job quoted Bible to him. They said, Job, look at it. Have you ever heard that a righteous man will get into the type of trouble you have got into? Check your life. Then he replied them, he said, my way is right. I look for him on the right, I can't find him. I turn back, I can't find him. And I have these terrifying dreams. They said, why will you, as a person who knows that God will never do unrighteously, why are you multiplying words to no purpose? Confess your sin. If there is sin in your tabernacle, put everything away 
and come back to the Lord. If your children have offended God and he killed them, why are you fighting with God? Why don't you come back to God and say, God, I have sinned and lay your hand on your mouth? He said, you are miserable comforters. If you two are in trouble, I could talk like you are talking, but I will not talk like that. I will comfort you. Eventually, God came down. And he said, all you three friends accusing this man, Job, you have not spoken things that are right about me, like Job, my servant. And Job, my servant, that you have accused in all those chapters, make sacrifices, he will pray for you. Do you know some of the people were accused, some of the people were condemned, they are the people to pray for us? They are the people accepted of God? And yet we don't know. But we will not say, children, have you any meat? If they said, we'll say backsliders, have you any meat? And if they said, no, I don't have any meat, that's why I came to tell you. To tell you that if you continue like that, you will never have any meat. Job, you are looking for job because of job. You have left the work of God. That job, never, you will never get that job. Take it from me as prophecy. Then after we have left, the man said, let me die now. Now death has come. But Jesus said, throw your net there. If you were the people that pursued the work of the Lord, will you tell them where to throw their nets? And then they throw their net, and the fish they rushed him. And one of them said, "That's the Lord. We know Him by His action. We know Him by His encouraging us. We know Him by His loving us. When we are not lovable, we know Him by what He does." And they began to go, go to Him. And right at the shore, He was already boiling. Look at Jesus Christ becoming their cook the cook of the people that left the work of god and said come and dine we'll talk but eat first i know what the problem is and after they ate he said peter do you love me oh peter said from the way you are even acting with me i must love you if i don't love you what else who else can i love look at what you have done for us you didn't talk about our backsliding you didn't talk about our problem. You didn't talk about all the evil we have done. Lord, I love you. Peter, do you love me more than this? Oh, Lord, I love you. Peter, tell me again. Do you love me? Lord, why are you doubting me? I love you. And he said, feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. The point I'm making is that he giveth power to the faint. He doesn't kill the people that are fainting. Maybe you have been discouraged. This worker's retreat is for you. And he'll give you all that you need. Amen. He'll supply water for those who are dry, dreary, and thirsty. And if you are fainting already, he'll give you power before you leave this worker's retreat. Amen. Look at that verse of scripture again. It says, he giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. You say, my strength is failing me. I'm just managing now. If it were not that they will come and visit me at home and they will say, Her sister, why is it? We didn't see you at workers' meeting. Honestly, that's the reason I'm going. If it is not that they will come and ask me and say, ah, bro, What happened to you? We're looking for you at the workers' meeting. Were you not there? If it were not because of the people that will be troubling me, that's the reason I go. Because things are bad. No money, no food, no joy. Before I got married, I had high expectation. But now, I can't talk. I can't tell you. But I will still be going. Because if I don't go, many people will be troubling me. He says it will increase your strength. If you will come to him, God is not rejecting you. And if you don't reject him, if you say, Lord, here am I. Here I come. The Lord says, he increases strength for those that have no mind. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We're going to wait upon the Lord. We're going to pray to the Lord. We're going to tell the Lord how we have been. We're not going to hide anything. When you get to the doctor, you don't hide your condition. You don't say, if I tell the doctor that uh, I have back pain, I have a stomach trouble, I have uh, something in my blood, I have a uh, heat in my body, he'll say, ah, only you. Are you the only one in the world? You have all these problems, so I will not tell the doctor everything. I will just tell the doctor, well, this uh, place is paining me a little. I know it's much, but if I talk like that to the doctor, he will think that I'm almost dying. 
but I will not I will not talk like that. I just say, Doctor, that place a little is paining me. Just do something. How about this, your stomach? Uh uh, don't worry. How about this, your blood? Let's check up your blood. No, I'm a Christian. Let's check up your bone. No, I I can manage that one. It's only that little part I told you. Just touch that one. After that one, I'm okay. Do we act like that to the doctors? No, we tell them everything. When we come to God, you know how some people behave. If I tell God, Oh Lord, I'm discouraged. Oh Lord, I am weak. Oh Lord, I don't even know how to pray again. Oh Lord, if it were not that people will be pushing me or asking me, I will not even go to that house to say I'm leading house fellowship. Oh Lord, if it were not because of this, in fact, I don't know what to do now. Things are wrong. This area, this area, that area. If I tell God like that, and when we are praying, and uh, you know how we Pentecostal churches, how we pray, we pray aloud. If those people around me, if they hear how I pray, they will open their eyes and look at me and say, eh? <laughs> so this person has totally gone like this. Because of that, some people don't wait on the Lord. They don't pray. They will say, uh uh-uh. I would allow i would allow everything to pass when we get back home where the devil will come again and you know just rub your face and you sleep when we get back home i will talk about it but here when everybody is uh, together and they will hear what i'm saying what i'm telling the lord uh-uh, not me not me they'll be looking at me when we leave the retreat and say look at this that's the person that was praying like that but if we don't do like that and you give yourself to the lord and say lord i'm going to tell you everything 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 before you go you'll find a change yeah. and it says you'll mount up with wings like, like eagle when you get to that height a river will not stop you you don't even wait for the dividing of the river you fly over a mountain doesn't hinder you hindrances don't come your way anybody shooting the gun you fly above the level of the bullet as eagles and that's when you wait upon the lord then he renews your strength he gives you power if you are painting already if you have been saying like elijah i cannot preach anymore i cannot lead fellowship anymore i cannot love anybody anymore now it's gone i just want to rest now you have double strength you go back and you lead the people and they say ah look at brother so and so look at sister so and so what happened to them only in a, they only went friday night and came back a saturday afternoon what are they doing in that place it doesn't take god time what you need what you have been crying for for the past five years in five minutes god can give everything to you yeah. why not rise up and talk to the lord and come to the height of the eagle wait upon the lord talk to the lord and say lord i need you we are happy because you brought us here this weekend lord we thank you very much because you knew us before we came to this retreat you have seen that our life is shattered you have seen that you have been discouraged. We have seen that you are worn out. But we thank you because you brought us here tonight so that every one of us will reach the eagle's height. Our Lord, we are grateful. Our Lord, we rejoice. Because we know that things will not remain the same in our, our life any longer. Father, you have shown us the example of Elijah, the example of Job, of Joshua, people that met with discouragement, people that were on fire for you before, but one time or the other, they were discouraged, but you did not forget them. We thank you because you have shown us clearly tonight that you are thinking about us. Our Father, we are grateful. Lord, we know that in whichever area that we have been worn out, in whichever area we have been discouraged, Lord, we pray that we encourage us before the end of this meeting in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Father, we thank you because we know that all that was said tonight through your servant, 
They are exactly what we are. We have been tired. We felt as if to drop the work. The words that are coming out of our mouths are no more words of encouragement. But we know that as from tonight, you have lifted us up. As from tonight, you have promised us that things will not remain the same again. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are just praying that you will renew our strength. Lord, we are praying that every one of us, with what you have spoken to us tonight, we will rise up on eagle's wing. Lord, and we will fly above circumstances. We will fly above problems. Lord, the river of problems cannot hold us any longer. The mountains of difficulties, of sicknesses, of discouragement cannot hold us any longer. Father, we are just asking you that every one of us, as from tonight, your work will take a new turn in our hands in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we have seen it from your example that even when Peter went a fishing, you came with the word of encouragement. You did not condemn him. And the same thing you told us tonight. Even though many a times we have decided whether to drop the work or whether to continue. But we thank you because you came tonight to encourage us that as we continue, you are with us. That as we continue, you are able to solve whatever problem that is facing us. Problems in the family. Problems at home. Problems in the place of work. Problems in the house care fellowship work. Problems in the areas of work that we are involved in the church. Lord, we are grateful because those problems, you have, you have solved them tonight. Lord, we are grateful because those problems will not go back with them in the name of Jesus Christ. Our God, we thank you because you did not reject us. You brought us together. You talk, you talk to us as, like, as father to son, father to children. Father, we are grateful. We are happy for the way you have talked to us tonight. We are just praying, Lord, increase our strength. We are waiting upon you. Renew our strength. Lord, help us that every one of us we will mount up wings like eagles. That even when we get back home in the different house fellowship, in the zones, in the area, in the district, in the church, people will know that we have met with the Lord Jesus Christ. Our yeah. God, we are just asking you that what you have done in our lives tonight, Father, all the blessings you have poured upon us tonight, all the problems that you have removed, Lord, we are asking. The blessing will be permanent in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Father, I'm praying that none of us will be discouraged any longer. Yes, Father, I am praying that even our life, with what we have had tonight, we affect the members. And it will affect the workers under us positively in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Thank you for the man of God that you have used for us tonight. We still know that you have much for us in this retreat. Lord, we are looking up unto you. We believe that until we are turned around, until we are what you want us to be, you will not leave us. Lord, we know that until you perfect your work in a different life, Lord, you will continue to talk and talk to us. And we are very sure, Father, that our going back tomorrow, Lord, we, we, we really see a new era in the work of God, in our hands, in Jesus' name. Amen. We are grateful unto you. Lord, we are just praying that you continue to bless our pastor. Amen. Lord, we pray that you continue to re review your mind unto him. Amen. We pray that, Lord, wherever, that, wherever we are still short of your power, wherever we are still short of your glory, wherever we are still short of your knowledge, Lord, before we leave this retreat tomorrow, perfect everything in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank you because we have answered.